So I definitely think you should check out Gavin Ortland's new book, Why God Makes Sense in a World That Doesn't. You could use this for personal use or for like your small group study, or even as a primary source for a more formal class at your church. I will save a thought or two for the end of this video. So I just want to jump right into the book's content here. As the title suggests, Gavin Ortland makes a case that the existence of God actually makes sense. But he does so by appealing to the attractiveness or the beauty of the Christian worldview. And so he argues that people need to hear the truth of Christianity, but that it's rarely accepted unless it touches people's longings, their loves, and their desires. And so here he relies heavily upon Blaise Pascal, who is a 17th century philosopher. And he argued that Christians need a threefold strategy when telling others about God. So number one, we need to show that it's respectable. It's not contrary to reason. Number two, we need to show that it's desirable or attractive and beautiful. And number three, we need to show how it's true. So of Pascal's three that I just listed here, Gavin Ortland attempts to accomplish number two by showing how Christianity is desirable, attractive, and beautiful. So Gavin takes this approach because we live in a world of competing attractions and numerous distractions. So the antidote to these distractions is something more compelling. So to his point, people need enchantment or a sense of awe and wonder. You're actually going to pick this up a lot in his book. So here's a quote from Gavin. He says, Beauty has its own kind of testimonial power, helping us feel the stakes of religious questions, compelling us to stop and listen. And again, he writes, thus, if we commend only the truth of Christianity and neglect the appeal to beauty and goodness, we are actually not hitting the central animating concerns of our culture. So one final point here, what can you expect in each chapter? Well, what he does is he compares the Christian story to the quote unquote story of naturalism. And he just asks this question, which is telling us a better story, a story that better accounts for the strangeness, the incompleteness, the brokenness, and the beauty of our world. So just to land the plane here, if you want to use this book for like a small group study, I think you could do that. But I do want to warn that it can get a little technical at times, at least for the everyday churchgoer. So if you are going to use this book in like a small group study context, I just recommend that you have someone who's familiar with apologetics who can help facilitate the conversation. I'm going to put a link to this uh, book in the description section below. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.